love you. Thank you so much for letting us be part of the journey. This is everything I ever like dreamt of. Oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> everything I possibly could have wanted has just come true. I'm so happy. To begin the episode, I have a little surprise for you, honey. What? What? Is that wasn't exciting. Wait, I'm scared. I don't like your surprises. Someone sent you a message. Okay. Um, and they sent you a message. Have you done a cameo? Uh, well, listen, someone sent you a message and it's very exciting. And so I've got them here for you. What the hell is going on? Okay, look, you I know... Feel like I can't speak because I'm like saliva in my mouth now. You know, you're... I can, I can say... We can say who it is. Jackie, we can... Okay, fine. So you, you love uh, Real Housewives. Mm-hmm. Do you like Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Yeah. You do? Yeah. If I was going to say to you the name, if I was, <laughs> if I was going to say uh, uh, Whitney Rose. Yeah. Well, Whitney Rose from Salt Lake City has... You, you pay for her coming. I, listen, I, she sent a message, so I want you to go back to the beginning. Hey, Sophie, it's Whitney Rose from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I apologize that it's a little bit dark. I am waiting in my car for carpool. Uh, my daughter is at soccer, but while I'm waiting, I want to deliver you a little belated message from someone who loves and adores you so very much. Your husband, Jamie, wants to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I'm sorry that it is after the fact, but he just wants you to know um, that he just thinks that you are so brave and he is so proud of you for conquering your battle with IBS because it was such a touch and go at, at times. With what? Um, I want to wish you <laughs> With what? <laughs> She thinks it's well, hello, with IBS because it was such a touch and go at, at times. Um, I want to wish you the best of luck as you pioneer um, this world of IBS. And I hope that you may find healing along this journey. And your husband is so proud of you. Your hot, sexy husband loves you so very much and thinks the world of you. And I want to personally wish you the best of luck on your IBS journey. And happy day of love. I love you so much. Thank she's you for your really support. She's being serious. <laughs> she's being That's fuzzy, not very nice. Like, people have IBS and I have IBS. I don't know what the fuck you're taking the piss. It's a but serious, you're, serious. You're a pioneer. You're a pioneer in the world. I hope you battle in this world of IBS. <laughs> Whitney Rose. She's oh. so sweet. She talks like this. She oh, my God. Voice. That was very sweet. Oh, so, yeah. if I was going to say. How much did you pay for that? Uh, I paid two hundred dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. Actually? yeah, yeah. I paid two hundred dollars. No, for you it. didn't. I did. I paid two hundred dollars, and it's two hundred dollars. I'll spend it again. If I was gonna say Dorrit, Dorit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I was gonna say, if you were gonna say Dorrit, I would think, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? If I was gonna say the name Dorit. How much have you spent on this? If I was going to say Real Housewives. Dorit, I love Dorit. I of love Beverly Hills. Yeah. Dorit. Yeah. Would you be excited? Yeah. She didn't respond. Really annoying. She rejected the video offer. But Shorty and Camille, they have to do it. Nope, they get to choose and she didn't go for it. But why not? I think she Googled you and thought, I'm not doing that. I don't know, honey. I don't know why. Why would she reject it? Don't they do it for everyone? Did you ask her to say, well done for battling IBS? She probably yeah. thought it was an absolute piss take. Well, no, I'm just proud of you. I honestly proud of you, honey. What are you talking about? I don't, I, I'm never, I'm not battling. You've got IBS. <laughs> okay. I don't battle anything. <laughs> you've, got, think, okay. you've got IBS from greats, let's be honest. You want to be, you, uh, you want, don't you battle me, sister? No, really. You want to battle me, sister? Yes, I do want to okay. battle you. Who started the grapes? What happened the other day? No, I... You, what happened the other you, day? I, no, the thing is with you is you're a liar. You're a liar, you're a thief, and you're a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me into Salt Lake City and that's in my bones. Look, I don't... I'm a to... liar, a thief, and a cheat? Yeah. What am I... Okay, what, what have I cheated? Okay. What have I thiefed done anything? You've cheated there because you cheated on a, on a cameo. That's not that cheating. That was cheating the game. You didn't f track her down and get a real message. You paid your way to the top. Yeah. You lied because you lied and said that I'm battling with IBS and you're a thief because you've just stole all my time by having to watch that bloody video. <sighs> all right, well, that's fair enough. Do you, so you didn't like it? 
Well, obviously not. Are you not? I thought you were obsessed with them. But you just, not a cameo. I don't. That want, is personalized message. She doesn't know who I am and she thinks she I'm does. with IBS. And now. you are. And no, be I'm strong not. and brave about it. You're being so weird. No, I'm not. And actually people have that. So you. you I know. And you're one of them. And I'm proud of no, you. No, I don't. I've never been diagnosed with it. Well, then whatever you ate the other night, that was. I, I no, Jamie, seriously, I haven't eaten anything. I have. Well, you should eat something. You must be very hungry. Oh my God, you're so irritating. Look, I reckon we just cut to the chase. Cut to the chase of what? Just begin the episode. <laughs> Should we just cut to the chase? Let's just cut to the chase. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Newlyweds Podcast. My name is Jamie Lang, and this is my lovely wife. This is my lovely wife, Sophie Hibby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, honey. I was thinking about this. Do you think couples are as weird as we are? Because I, I'm, I would be really upset if they are. We, we are. You'd be upset. I'd be so thrilled. We, we are as a couple, so strange. <laughs> it is. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain to the listeners. And I, and as we were doing it in the morning, I. Would, I really do not say what we were doing this morning. No, not this morning. When? As we were doing it this uh, the other morning, I was like, if anyone saw us in the window, they would be like, what is? I, I'll tell you, listeners, what we do. I'm taking a shower, okay, in the morning, <clears throat> and I'm playing Beyonce's new song. Oh, I'm holding. Uh, how does it go? I'm a hold up. Yeah, a little hold up. The country song yeah. that she's created. I'm singing that in the shower, I'm completely naked, and I'm singing and I'm having a great time. My wife Sophie suddenly appears in the doorway. She's got a toothbrush in her hand and she's singing all out into the toothbrush. It then goes on to another song, like I think it's Wagon Wheel. Or something like that. Another yeah, country anyway, song. Well, I don't you know what's start. Good about you start. Okay, that's this isn't the weird bit. You st you're singing into the mic into your microphone. It's a toothbrush. I'm the chat. You then hand me the toothbrush as you as if you're handing me the microphone. I'm singing into that. You then grab my penis. No, I don't. And sing into it. <laughs> I didn't. As if that's a microphone. No, so I didn't. I'm singing. I actually, you know, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. Why are you lying? Yeah. I, Why are you lying? Do not, you lying? do not make me look stupid. That is so weird do not, that you're lying. You are lying. You do not make I me look. I did not do that. You're, like, you're, you're saying lying. to me that I wasn't singing yeah, to the toothbrush. I didn't do that. While you were singing into my no, penis. No, I didn't do that. I swear <laughs> to fucking God. How small do you think I am? I'd have to bend right over. And you were. No, I wasn't. Yes. No. No, you've lost it. Don't. You've lost it. That is so... You've lost the plot. <laughs> that is so... That's really weird. No, it's not because that's what happened. That isn't what happened. I sang into the, my toothbrush, I gave it to you, and then I was just your backup dancer in the background. That is not true. That is That lie. is not true. I, I, I swear on our... F I swear. You've lo you've genuinely dreamt that. No, I have not. You're look, you smile. I swear, I didn't you're do that. so naughty. Anyway, but we do, we do. There, there are there are strange things that couples sure do. I'm sure loads of people do strange things. Do you think there are? Yeah, I think people do weird things. Do you think there's uh, strange? Yeah, but oh, the stuff that we do is quite strange. I think the stuff that we do is quite strange. Yeah, because you're quite strange. No, I'm not that strange at all. You're a little bit strange. We also went and did um, Sunday brunch this week. And we, we had a great, we went to Sunday brunch, we went to the BAFTAs. Oh, it was a great week, wasn't it? How funny was it? We went into Sunday brunch. Yeah. You went off camera because you were taken off and I had to stay on. And when you when you were off, I... Oh, yeah, I was watching him, like, on the screen, on the, what they call the monitor. Yeah. And I just saw Jamie look in the camera, the camera pans at him, and he's like, blood was just trickling down his head. And I see him grab the guy next to him's napkin and start dabbing his head. And all I thought is... Oh, he's just picked a spot on live TV. <laughs> on live TV. It was live, wasn't it? Yes. On live TV. It's just beyond bizarre. And then they cut cameras. I just saw him run to the loo. I was like, what's just happened? <laughs> so strange. Live TV. We were Dizzy Rascal. That's so sick. We were Dizzy Rascal. I think I went and saw him. We did. We've been to lots of different things recently. We went to the BAFTAs, which was hilarious. And we went into the after party. And Sophie then, Sophie, you, you're so good in these situations because I felt a bit awkward going there for some reason. I don't. I felt like I was going to a Taylor Swift concert. Yeah, but why do you feel like you're going because, to... Because, like, why do you feel awkward? Like, no one's going to talk to me or know who I am. So I'm just going to observe. But they'll know I'm who going I am. To a cop they wouldn't. They and they'll be like, that's Jamie, the Radio 1 Jamie, host. Guys, that's the Radio 1 Jamie, host. Jamie, we were sat down. At, right. 
when you go to a party and you don't know anyone and everyone's standing up and everyone's arriving, do you stand up and walk around and shake your hand and go, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Jamie? Jamie was yes. like, that's what we should be doing. I was like, you beggy, beggy freak. <laughs> no. Sit the fuck down. I'm in this corner. I'm eating the canapes and then I'm out of here. I'm going to see Margot Robbie and then I'm gone. We didn't even see Margot Robbie. I saw her husband though. <laughs> and I keep telling all my friends, I'm like, they're like, so who did you see? I'm like, Margot Robbie's. They're like, no way. I'm like, husband. <laughs> Sophie said to me, Sophie said when we were there, she leaned in and said, you have to tell all my friends that we saw famous people though, because they'll think we were with famous people. So you've got to say it. I was like, who there were we loads of famous people. There was a room full of famous people. Who? But I didn't see like Ryan Name one. Gosling Name one. Um, uh, I know one. I can't remember what his, his name is, but Mitch he looks Wright. like Rod Stewart. He's an actor and he looks like Rod Stewart and he was there. And also I'm sure there was like the programs from like that new program that's making everyone cry. The One Show or something. Was he there? I'm pretty sure she was there. What? And, and then I saw your mate. He was great in the velvet jacket. Mm-hmm. What was that? There was loads of people there. There was loads of people in like cool outfits. It was very small and intimate. And well, sorry that we didn't see everyone. You made me leave at 11. We were there for an hour. Are you joking? I did not make you leave. Yeah, you did. You were like, should we just... We should go... Got an early day. That BBC radio job is really making you nervous, isn't it? Yeah, I, guys, I got a uh, BBC Radio 1 gig for drive time, which I'm very excited about, but I do feel a bit nervous about it. He's so nervous and he's mistaking like the nerves for like him having like a mental breakdown. He's like, <laughs> do you think it's normal then that I'm like worried about this? I'm like, yes, you free. Yeah, I feel a bit stressed at the moment because of it. That's normal. I do feel a little bit You're stressed. You're going to be great, honey. Why do you feel stressed? I don't know. I feel a bit stressed because it's a lot of work and it's it's and quite people, hectic. People, there's like quite some like comments, right? Not mean comments. There's loads of good comments. But like BBC fans are, they're rife. I'm they're gonna, there. Look, I'm gonna, look this, is, this is what happened. So for people who care or not, I, I've been announced, which is very exciting, as the new Radio 1 host for Drive Time, which is 3 to 6 p.m. Monday to Thursday. Very exciting. I'm with Vic Hope, co-hosting with Vic Hope. Jordan North, who was the current host, has gone to Capital Breakfast. I mean, if they've read the news. Sophie's also become obsessed with TikTok, guys. She's absolutely obsessed with it to the point where she constantly sends me videos. Well, guys, of- my TikTok <laughs> algorithm is fucking, it's absolutely mental. She, she, it's mental. She I have- sends me a video of a guy who's just playing with a snake. No, guys, all of it is, is... One guy is just playing with snails and then he he has 16 million followers and him and his family, they sit down in front of him and they they slop down like this bowl and in this bowl is like mush and then in this other bowl is like mush and then they get their hands in there like, and they feed each other. Can we also say about your video? And then Please, can we say about your video? No, we can't because then people will look at it. No, they won't. It's still up there. No, are you fucking joking? Obviously not. I've got a huge... I've kept the video up because no one's noticed. Don't put that in. I've not had any comments. So I'm like, I'm just like, half a million people have seen No one's this. commented. They would comment. Because they, they don't want you to know. Well, I'll just delete it after this and no one's going to see it. And then you've just lost me, all those followers. <laughs> what, what? I'm really enjoying TikTok. Anyway, I have like other <laughs> ones. I get like these random people dressed as like elves. They have like elf ears on. And they'll be like in a park in Greenwich and they'll be like, <laughs> and then they like do a mime it's nuts it's every other one do you think we're romantic with each other um yeah i think we are i'm not as romantic as you'd like me to be but i am romantic i made what did i make you at the weekend you made me cookies and that was it you know there were cupcakes too you made me cookies and cupcakes but then i try to do something romantic i try to carry you up the stairs and that was quite romantic you remember that no, because you wanted to game, so you're like, "Oh, you to bed." No, I didn't. I, I don't no, know how and they. And then you, and then you collapsed because you said I was so happy. I don't know how they do it in the movies. You were lying on the sofa, and I thought this is going to be a wonderful moment, so I scooped you up in my arms. You got to remember the like we're the same height. What? We're the same height. That's all right. That we're the same height. No, I scooped you up in my arms, and I went to carry you up the stairs because I thought it was going to be a romantic moment. And honestly, the only way I can describe carrying you is like carrying a really heavy carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't know how people do that, how they carry you up the stairs and be romantic in that way. They're full of testosterone. Is that what it is? Mm. All right, honey pants. Listen, I love you. I think you're fab in every single way. I love you. I think you're fab in every single way. Do you know what we should do, though? Because we got a lot to get into this episode. The episode today, we have really exciting news because we have Josh and Charlie who 
we organized the proposal. They're coming on the podcast stage. So we're going to chat through everything that they've been through, how the proposal was, all those kind of things. And we also have another guest, Alex, who organized the flash mob. That's all today in the podcast. We're in wedding mode right now. We want to hear the update on their wedding planning. I can't wait. I can't bloody wait. Before that, honey, it's time for listeners' messages. Okay, guys, thank you so much for sending in your listeners' messages. We absolutely love them, don't we? Absolutely. Oh, we <sighs> bloody love them. We oh, bloody love we them. We bloody love them. Oh, we bloody love oh, them. Oh, bloody love them. Ah, oh, we bloody love them. I bloody love your hair today. Why are you co- focusing on it's my just hair? This has never looked so fluffy. You look so sweet. You have your hair pinned back today and you look adorable. Okay, come on, punk but rocker. But you do punk rocker. You're looking great at the moment, honey. Oh, no. Come on. You're looking great. By the way, before we go into listeners' messages, you have your new car. I know. How? What are we calling it? Well, we're going to get into that. So you have your new car. It's a what? A Fiat. You have 500 your, you have your black. F- Fiat 500 She's black. a trendy girl. So what would you like to call? So the last blue one was called Fanny. Mm. What are you going to call this Fiat? Bob. You want to call it Bob? Fanny's your aunt and Bob's your uncle. So we've got some listener suggestions for the name of the car. You okay, ready? yeah, give it to me. Mini Moo, no. Bollies, absolutely not. Love that. Fresh Fanny. Fresh Fanny. <laughs> New Fanny. Rinky Dink. Minty. Minty. Minty Fresh. Well, it's not green, so Minty would be quite weird. Uh-huh, keep going. That's it. I think I'm going to call it Rinky Dink. Yeah, You're not rinky. calling it Rinky Dink. I am. I think you've got you to say it... it like this. Rinky Dink. What about Fresh Fanny? <sighs> Obviously not. That's a good one. I'm not calling it my Fresh Fanny. New Fanny. New Fanny. Fanny 2.0. New, call it your new Fanny. Fanny 2.0. Okay, well, we'll decide. When we see her, I think a name will come to us. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have our listeners' messages, and the first one is from Mary. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Hey, I thought this would be a perfect proposal story to share on newlyweds, or should I say poo proposal? Me and my boyfriend went on holiday to Greece, and unfortunately, after the first evening, I got food poisoning. So for two days, I had been non-stop vomiting and diarrhea. Within the first day, I went through 12 pairs of our pants. I also was so dehydrated that I passed out on the toilet. And in order to get me back to bed safely and as quick as possible, my boyfriend wiped my bottom. That is low. Oh, my God. That is That's bad. But like if you're ill, it's not embarrassing, I don't think. Would you ever wipe my bottom? Well, if you would pass out on the loo, yeah, probably for you. You would? Well, obviously, I'm not going to leave. Oh, night, Jamie. <laughs> Shove your head so it's leaning on this, the wall. Now, only did this solidify how much I would like to marry him and how amazing he is afterwards. We laughed about how it would make a good part of his wedding speech. On the third day of feeling like crap, I woke up from a nap and found my boyfriend had gone for a walk. I got quite emotional and was crying when he came back because I was upset we had only ha- three days left of our holiday and I spent the majority of it on the toilet dying. He consoled me while also starting to cry himself. He got up and said he had something that might cheer me up. He went into his bag and got out the ring and asked me to marry him. It may have not been how he planned to ask me, but the moment was perfect. Oh that God, is... That's a real goosebump moment. What? I love him. I love that. That's what you call love. That is real love. That's, right would you wipe my bum? 100%. Okay, great. I would wipe your bum. I don't have any qualms any of that. I'd wipe your bum. I would... Okay, you don't have to get too excited about it. Well, I would. Okay, we've got one from Anonymous. Okay, go for it. Absolutely mortifying story time. To set the scene, I'd been seeing a boy for about two months. I knew he was coming over. And so, as you do, I did the everything shower, shaving my whole body and washing my hair. Is that what they do? Yeah. Yeah. When you have longer hair, sometimes when washing it, it can get stuck between your butt cheeks. So when you wash it, like the strands of hair, like this. Yeah, I get it. It gets stuck between your butt cheeks. Yeah. Skip forward a few hours. You do, I don't understand how you need to explain that to me. Well, you said say it again, so I didn't think you've never had long hair. Because I don't think you've ever had your hair stuck between your ass cheeks. Yeah, I have. That's fucking weird. Why? <laughs> well, because your hair molts and it goes into your bum. Your strands of blonde tufts. I yeah, and then it goes into, yes. I think that would just be pubic hair. <laughs> it's not pubic hair. Okay, skip forward a few hours. He's come over and we're doing the deed. We end up in doggy style with the lights on and he stops <laughs> thrusting for a moment and makes a confused sound. I turn around to ask what is wrong when I see him looking quite closely at my asshole. He then proceeds to take a long hair from between my cheeks. I'm quite embarrassed, but tell him I wash my hair and sometimes it happens. That's mortifying. He doesn't think much. Anyone looking into my asshole, I would be like, 
Like, no. That's what happens. Such an invasion of my privacy. That's what happens. What do you mean that's what happens? If you do doggy style, your bum hole is there. Uh, <laughs> Are you joking? Are you joking? No, I'm look not. forward. To where? where? Space. Um, yeah, fucking look at the headboard. <laughs> Don't look at that. What the hell? <laughs> okay. Uh. Maybe what we should do, we should get a picture of you and I'll put it there above you. Yeah, do that. <laughs> look at that. He doesn't headboard. think much of it, but then says, there's another one. He reaches forward to get it. And as he does, I feel a sharp, long pain. We, I know exactly what's happened. We're both horrified to learn that the long, long hair is in fact attached and grows. Growing from my butthole. <laughs> it only got worse. Oh my God. It only got worse when he explained that is longer than my finger. No, what's happened is he, it was like on her butthole, right? And his willy went in and pushed it in. It's not growing from inside her asshole. It is. Her sphincter. I don't think it's that's... It's coming from her butthole. That's not the case. Yes. I wanted to disappear into the bed and never see him again. Definitely to be one of the most mortifying moments of my life. But somehow two years later, we are happily living together with a dog. Although I have upped my attention to the detail within my shaving routine. That is fantastic. Who was it? Who told us the story about when they, the some person tried to grab the hair from their face? Your mum. <laughs> yes. Well, my mum was on Why a... would your mum do that on a date? Like, if I was on a date... <laughs> my my mum went on a date. I think we've said this story, but I'll say it again. My mum went on a date when she was... Bre- <laughs> she just got divorced. And she was like, oh, I might as well just go out there and go on a date. She went on a date with a man. And she was sitting across the table from him. And she saw he had a hair on his chin that was quite long. So he's like, oh, you got something on your chin? She thought it was something. She went to grab it and pulled it. <laughs> was attached. No, it was on his neck. <laughs> it was attached. <laughs> so he went, oh. <laughs> if that's like everyone with my mole here, I've got this like white mole on my chin and uh, everyone's like, oh, you got, and I'll be like, and they're like, mm, still there. And then I see the sheer horror in their face. They're like, oh, it's attached to her face. It's attached to her face. Didn't like, you go and have a facial once when they tried to pop it? Every time, I reckon five <laughs> times out of 10 facials, they'll squeeze and I go, it's a mole. And they're like, no, it's not. I'm like, yeah, it is. Why do you get it removed? I don't want to get it removed. Why don't you get your head removed? <laughs> don't fucking tell me to get things removed. <laughs> head removed? Yeah. Anonymous, your turn. Oh, God. You make me laugh, honey. You make me laugh. Go on. All right, sissy pants. You just chill out, girl. I also have a love story from Ellen. We love love stories. And also, the greatest thing is that when these get sent in, I just don't, they're, they're a surprise. So I don't know what they're going to say. This story I'm about to tell you melts my heart. It's all about my grandparents, Shirley and Derek, and their love journey. Their story starts back to way before I was born. Shirley was the beautiful young sweetheart, and my granddad was a cool leather jacket wearing rock and roller. They would often act like love-struck teenagers and were inseparable. They eventually got married in their late teens. As their love story was growing, so was the family. They had five children together, and one of them was my dad. Shirley was a busy mother looking after her five young children at the time with Derek. But their marriage wasn't always plain sailing and had a few bumps along the way. So much so that unfortunately they ended their marriage in their late 20s, with both of them feeling heartbroken and lost in their new separate lives. Fifty years had passed and Dad was about to marry my stepmom. My dad is a man of very few words and had forgotten to tell me that I would be sat next to his father, Derek, who had never met. I felt so nervous and awkward that I asked my nanny Shirley if she could sit between Derek and I as I didn't feel comfortable sitting next to a stranger. As the wedding went on, I could see that my grandparents were getting on really well and were laughing and talking all through the night, almost as if those 50 years of not talking or seeing each other had simply melted away. A few weeks went by and I knew that Shirley and Derek were still communicating. After the wedding, she had a huge grin on her face and would constantly reminisce in her past adventures with my granddad, to which I always enjoyed listening to. Eight months after my father's wedding, my granddad moves into my nanny's house as they can't bear the thought of not speaking or seeing each other for any longer. It was like they were young teenagers in love again. I can't bear it. And I have never seen my nanny this happy in all my life. Fast forward today and they have remarried. <gasps> I actually can't bear it, guys. That's a true love story. That's amazing. That's amazing. They're in their 70s, and I'm so thankful that my granddad came back into our lives because my nanny means so much to me, and he clearly was her missing piece for 50 years. (gasps) 
This just goes to show that love has no age and needs no and needs to be worked on sometimes. But in the end, love always triumphs. That is so wonderful. Charlie and Derek, I would love to meet them. Just remember, life has those ups and downs. You thinking we're going to divorce them? No, you? I'm not thinking we're going to divorce. I think we're unbreakable, if I'm actually honest. But just remember, I'm gonna have you're gonna have moments where I'm not here and you're not here, and I'm only where are we? F- well, forty percent. I'm I'm talking about energy wise. Maybe I'll have moments when I'm feeling grumpy or feeling sad or you, feeling. I have those moments already with you. You get out of here. <laughs> you get out of here. You shush, you little numpty. Hey, I want to say a big thank you to every single person who always sends in messages. Thank you so much. Um, please keep sending them in because they're great. We love them. And we love them. Send them into at Newlyweds Podcast or send us an email, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk. Honey, that's the end of... That's the end of listeners' messages. Okay, I'm very excited because if you listened to a couple of episodes ago, we organised an amazing flash mob for Charlie and Josh. Josh wanted to propose to Charlie. They've been together 10 years, I think it is. And it was very exciting. We managed to pull it off and it was incredible. So later on, we have Josh and Charlie coming on the podcast to talk about it. But also we thought what would be amazing is speak to Alex, who organized the flash mob. All of the links to Alex's website and Instagram, social media accounts is in the description below. She's incredible. So we're going to talk about how it was organized and then talk to the happily engaged couple. Alex, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So, so we've done lots of stuff with you. Um, so we've done loads of different flash mobs. We did the flash mob where we announced the new name of the show. Mm-hmm. We did so that much fun in Victoria Station, which was amazing. That was crazy. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> Marching band, first time for us, but so great. First time me singing in in the. You were surprising me so nervous. I was more nervous than you could possibly imagine. Yeah, you were really nervous. I remember being up there and I was like, "Is is he is he going to do this?" Is yeah. he going to do this? I was like, you've got this, Jamie. I wasn't really <laughs> ready for it. More recently, you helped organise the amazing proposal between Charlie and Josh, which was incredible. So what does your company do? Can you explain it? Yeah, so I've got sort of two two companies. Uh-huh. One specialises in kind of dance stunts, surprise stunts for people, um, like flash mobs, I guess. And the other one, the tailors specializes in personalized surprises for people so personalized performances like we did for josh and charlie mm. so changing all the lyrics like we did for you amazing when we came and gate crashed on your birthday so i loved so fun. it yeah it's a lot of work yeah um it's super rewarding obviously because i think you mentioned on the last podcast you wanted to do a job where you surprise everyone every day and that kind of is yeah. my job so you yeah. can come and work for us if you want any hundred percent i'm there um but it is really stressful at the same time. You know, like people say, um, one cigarette takes five minutes off your life or something like that. I think Uh-oh. every flash mob takes at least 10. I'm probably due to die next week. Really? Is yeah, that yeah. Stressful? Really? It's, it's so stressful. But I love it at the same time. The love is like this and the stress is like this. And the so adrenaline's it's like, like... Absolutely, yeah. So how many proposals have you done? Oh, it has to be in the hundreds, I'd say. Really? Yeah. No That's a real special moment. Yeah, it's really lovely. Like there's it's nothing really better than two people getting proposed and yeah. you being able to witness it. And even now, I, 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 if I'm not there in person, which I'm there in person for most of them, but if I'm not there in person, I still look it back and I'm not, in tears almost every single one. I mean, there have been, there, there, no one's ever said no as well, but obviously the, the loads that I've done, there have been a few that like you think, was that the right choice for that specific person? <gasps> like maybe two times where the guys booked a flash mob more for him. <gasps> than the girl. Uh, do you okay, know what I mean? But we Barry do that sounds a bit now. like me. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely do that. What's happened? Do you have any stories? Oh, well, I mean, um, I've got I've got so many stories. I mean, there's just been a few where like I mean, only about two really, but where the girls kind of been like this. <gasps> no, they've said no. And no, not said no. They've always said yes. Well, they couldn't say no in front of no. all those people. And some could of they? like maybe again about, about two out of hundreds have gone on to not get married. <gasps> yeah. And we have had, I think, one guy who was quite close to booking us, and then he said, "Oh, we've broken up." So I think that Whoa. I think that the flash mob was trying to be like a hail mary to like save the relationship. Oh and then my it god, didn't the hail mary, oh the hail mary god. to but, make it work. But the vast majority like are amazing and go off without a hitch. But I think it's our job, and this is where the stress comes in, mm. to stop any hitches before they happen. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you can't predict how people are going to react. You can't predict you're out in the public a lot of the time. You don't know what's going to happen. We actually 
So once we were intentionally sabotaged <gasps> on a flash mob proposal. Explain, what? explain, explain. Yeah. By an ex. It was really bad. So um, the client got in touch with me and he wanted to do something really different. So he ended up booking this bowling alley. So they went there all the time. It was a really popular bowling alley in London. Um, so they're having their meal and all of a sudden the music goes really loud and they look over and on the bowling alleys, there's four dancers doing a routine, literally one per bowling alley. So they were like, oh, that's really cool. And then nearer them, a whole table of people get up and start dancing. And then the peop the girls from the bowling alley move around to the restaurant and everything gets closer and closer to the couple. So at first she's obviously like, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Oh, wow. And then everything starts kind of moving towards her. So it's really magical, really special. We're about four minutes into a five minute performance and we are there. We're, we're looking at her. So I'm pretty sure by now she knows something is up for yeah. her. And the music just goes off. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so we're dancing. And, and because of the nature of the venue, we couldn't just go and check the music because... You couldn't run off and it's too far away. Do you know what I mean? And at that point, we didn't know what happened. We had no idea. So we just start singing, everybody <laughs> rock mm -hmm. your butt and just kept sort of oh. doing the performance, oh my God. singing it. And it was on, it was 20, 20 or 30 seconds, but it was oh. honestly, the, and that sounds like a short time, but it no, was no. honestly long. the worst. And then oh my God. the music and came back up. And you're perfectionist as well. So oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie, so. you don't even know. I was so, uh, like, it, this haunted me for, honestly, years. Years <laughs> still after. Still now. <laughs> still, still now. <laughs> Losing sleep. But, um, so then the music came back up. And so we were, obviously I was like, thank God. And then, because I was about to run over and try and fix it myself. Yeah. Inexplicably, it comes back up. We pull him out of the chair and he joins in it was all a bit eggy but we got it back oh, because there was enough there. i know right there was enough of it left to sort of get back into the spirit mm -hmm. and then he pulls her up he proposed she's she's loving it she's like wow this is amazing and she's got such a and we're all like like normal we're all very teary and like it's beautiful and so we it managed to be rescued but later down the line i realized that because the manager of the venue told me the big boss the, one of the managers at the venue had been told she was losing her job the day before. <gasps> and she'd not been involved in the planning of this at all. <gasps> yeah. So she obviously thought, well, this is too loud. This is she disruptive in the it. restaurant. And when, and, and we've actually got her on camera. No, you don't. Going over to, you can see it in the corner of the footage, going over to the... No, you don't. Yeah. And, and turning, turning it, it down. What she a turned down. it down and then the boss of the venue who obviously planned it with me ran over and turned it back up. Well, she's definitely losing her job now then, isn't <laughs> she? She's, she's gone. <laughs> she is gone. not getting really hard. That is insane. Wow. Oh, yeah. no, 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 that's you, really intense. How can you plan for that? No, you that's can't. Gonna, what is the moment where everyone starts to cry? Because I know with Charlie and Josh, there, there was the moment... Can Josh can show oh, you the Josh world. Josh can show you the world. <laughs> oh, that's it. Da, 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 da. And I'm literally in the back in floods next to producer <laughs> was, Jack. He was so nervous crying. before. He was like a puppy. He was like, what are they? Is she here? Is she here? Really freaking out. Yeah. But those moments are insane, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it is great. I think that the moment where, because we have to hold it together because you can't, you can't, I learned this really early on because on the early ones, I would get genuinely so emotional that my singing voice would be like, <laughs> and I, but you can't you sound awful so you have to really kind of hold that back and then when the proposal moment actually happens normally it's to music and we're not singing so you can have that moment emotionally for you and that's when everyone like really tears up and then we pull it back and we sing like two lines at the end just to wrap it up oh my god it's so, so it's, it's all like a you know it's, it's perfectly figured out over so many times of doing oh my it god. <laughs> josh and charlie's one was amazing it was really special. It, it was, was unbelievable. It was it was just amazing in so many ways. It was incredible. But you want to also encourage people to reach out to you, right? And to yeah. organize more of these wonderful moments. Yeah, we're actually doing an initiative where, which is called Surprise Someone. And it's where we can do a, a few of these a year of pro bono surprises for people that really deserve it. So we want to take our skills we're also looking for corporate sponsors for this, guys. Okay, Just in case there are any companies out. out there that want, um, <laughs> yeah, that want to you know, sponsor something like this. 
but we um we want to sort of the people that really deserve an amazing moment in their life we want to make that happen and we want to get really creative with it but if someone wants to get in touch with you it can be a proposal it can be an event it can just be a, a romantic or thing volunteer a, a vo- a, but but anyone oh, yeah. to organize yeah. these different things anyone can just do it for an amazing surprise can't they and get in touch with you and honestly mm-hmm. from what we've done with you guys it's just been amazing oh thank you You guys are so professional so awesome so talented thank you so much and it's It's amazing yeah like if anybody wants to get in touch for a surprise for their wedding birthday party corporate event we're always here that's what we do proposal proposal Uh, thank you so much thank you we love you you're amazing i want everyone to get in touch with you with all as i said all the links are in the description below so if you want to get in touch with alex you can thank you so much thank Thank you for having us you're amazing we appreciate it thank you alex oh my god oh my god dude that was amazing amazing. okay honey now is for the moment that we've been waiting for can't bloody wait i can't freaking wait bloody way okay so if you listen to our episode where we had charlie and Josh on. Josh is the boyfriend, Charlie was the girlfriend, and Josh wanted to propose to Charlie. So he came to us, we organized an amazing flash mob in a restaurant, and Charlie said yes. We haven't caught up with them since, but they are here right now to catch up on what exactly happened, how they're feeling, what the wedding planning is going, all those kind of things. So please, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the stage. Not, okay. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. to the chairs. It's Charlie and Josh. The fiancés. <laughs> Quite like that. Say yeah. that one more time. I like it's that. Charlie and Josh. The fiancés. Love that. That's great. Hey guys. <laughs> Hello. Oh my god. Guys, you nervous? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not too bad. Yeah. I'm not too bad. Josh, I'm... you're never nervous. Josh, you can't be more. Ne- you can't be nervous for this. You just did like a live <laughs> proposal. Yeah. I mean, it actually felt. I didn't feel too bad to be honest. Um, you make me feel more nervous. You s- <laughs> doesn't he that. do that? Like he has this energy, and you're like you're freaking me out. It's yeah. too. I wasn't freaking. You. Let, let's, let's just play this straight, right? I was I was worried because you weren't that scared, and I was like, <laughs> buddy, this is a big decision. Like, are you okay? And you were like, yeah, I'm just completely. That's chill. reflecting on you. Did you? You shouldn't be scared. You should know it's the right decision. You yeah, then- so there was there was nervous energy. Like mm. I, I was nervous, but then like I'd be like, Mella, I'd be fine, and you come up to me and you just shake me. I'm <gasps> like everything's going to be okay. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Every- Do you want to go outside? Do you want fresh air? Water? Drink? Boo- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, I just want you to leave. I, <laughs> I forced you into a drink at one point. I was like, you'll want this. And, and you had like a cognac or something. What <laughs> no, did you have? No, I just ran on the rocks. Yeah, yeah. No, Even weirder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's lovely. On the rocks. That is, that's okay, I want to hear everything. So, so Joshi first. So um, explain to everyone how this has. So we sent uh, a message out on the podcast saying if anyone wants to get to, to organize a program, we want to help you do it. You then got in touch with us, didn't you? Yeah, so I just sent you kind of just off the cuff um yeah just thinking about proposing in 24 any kind of tips or anything like that would be amazing and i did a little sign off line where i don't know if you know about this the sign off line was oh by the way if, if jamie wants to know i've got some piles cream for him <laughs> <laughs> that you signed off anusol oh, baby are you on the anusol you're on the anusol no nice. comment yeah. did you help him with the anusol <laughs> no very useful um, but it was amazing. So then you arrived. You were so calm. You were so relaxed. Um, how are you feeling when you... Because if you haven't seen the... Uh, listen to the episode or seen the video, Josh, you walk out when the music goes, a love is an open door. Charlie, you're sitting there. Josh, what are you feeling when you're behind the door and you're about to propose? Um... Well, it was a bit of a weird one because it wasn't like it all kind of happened so quickly. So we were there like a few hours before and then we're waiting. Uh, I was literally waiting in the toilet because... Uh, I was obviously messaging Lucy at the time because she was saying we're next door. Who we're, who's we're, Charlie's friend? Charlie's right? friend. Like without her, this wouldn't have been possible as well. And I was te- I was texting her, and there she was like, "Yep, yeah, we're just we're just finishing up. We're leaving soon." So everyone got into their positions, um, and it'd been about fifteen minutes, and I hadn't heard anything. And then Jack messaged me <laughs> saying, "Where is she?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I text Lucy. And um, Lucy was like, she's trying on clothes. I can't go out to changing rooms. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps trying to buy stuff. So what were you thinking? Did what? you have any idea? Yeah. I had no idea. So I said, so Lucy was like, Charlie, we're late. And I was like, it's fine. If we get at five past 10 miles, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, obviously, I had no idea at this point. You thought you were going for a prize dinner. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> my, so Lucy messaged me um, like a couple weeks before saying she'd won a competition with work. 
um, and one of the prizes was to go for dinner. And um, so I obviously, I asked her, I was like, oh, well, you know, what were the other prizes? And she yeah. told me, one of the prizes was a whole sun. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Le- Sorry, Lucy's a legend. <laughs> oh, no. Someone won a big salmon. That is the biggest panic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really good, really Sophie. Lucy, that that's is, really good. That is so good. <laughs> How oh. old were you when you met? So I just turned 18. So it was like four days after my 18th birthday. Oh my gosh, so. you've like been through all those incremental yeah. years growing up. Yeah, we've that. literally grown up together. Yeah. Like all of our friends have like gone through the whole process of getting married. And I feel like it's all I was talking about for ages. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it got to the point, I was like, I honestly thought it was never gonna happen. Um, and I and I did, like, accepted, I was like, do you know what, it's fine. I was even thinking now, I was like, well, we can have kids first and then we can get married later. So I'd like mentally actually accepted. Oh, sure. And like <laughs> only a week before, so we were with my family and my brother's girlfriend was asking me, oh, when are you gonna get engaged? And I said, I was like, Sakia, listen, it's not going to happen. Um, it's not going to happen for a while. Like, you're going to be getting engaged before me. And then she asked me, she went, what would your dream proposal be? And I said to her, my dream proposal would be a flash mob. <gasps> I know. A goosebumps. Goosebumps. <laughs> Are you serious? No, and this was a Are you promised me? I promised Did you know, Josh? What that, that would be her dream proposal. We'd spoken about different proposals and stuff like that before. And it's stuff that had kind of come up. Um, but I just never thought I'd be able to pull it off. Well, at what point when they the flash mob was singing, at what point were you like, this is from about me? So like at the, I would say the first song, I was like, oh, this is just, I was like, this is one of the restaurants you go to and they like sing and dance around you. I was like, oh, that's so nice. And then I was like, wait, they said my name. And I was like, and I looked at Lucy and I thought, she must have told them this stuff about me, like not even realizing. <laughs> and then when they started singing A Whole New World and they said, Josh, and this thought, I was like, oh my gosh, I think it's a proposal. And I told myself, no, 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 don't, it might not be. Because I was like, I think it could be. And I looked behind me to see if he was there. And he wasn't. <laughs> oh and I God. was like, no, he's not there. And then I saw other people around filming. And in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, these random strangers are now filming us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had no idea. And I was just thinking, oh my word, like what's going this on? This has been awkward now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, then, and then I was like, no, this is. Because I, I just looked at Lucy and then she just gave me a look. And then I was like, oh, this is, this is a proposal. I could cry now. Oh, yeah, that's the oh, most. No. Oh, and you've got it forever and ever and ever to watch. How many times have you guys watched it? Oh, so Honestly, so many. I watch it pretty much every day. Oh, I, I keep like, watching I love it as well. It's so yeah. good. And I just, I just cry. The whole, I just cry so much. I feel like all I do is cry when I watch it because it's so special. It is so special. Yeah. And I just, I, I, Josh, you hero, man, because you allowed us, our little team here, just to, to organize it for you. And you gave us that sort of privilege, I suppose, to do that, to be part of your journey. And, 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 Look, Alex was amazing. The team were amazing, and we just hope we did a great job for you guys because it was just the, it's the coolest thing in the entire world. It couldn't have gone any better. Okay, like, great. it was oh, yeah. perfect. Oh. Like every single part of it was just it, yeah, it couldn't have gone any better. We're invited to the wedding, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. We'll put it in your card as well. So okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Well, the oh. best man needs to be there. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I knew you felt that as well. <laughs> Not even freaking kidding. It was you. when I was on one knee. It was just the kidding. look. <laughs> we did a rehearsal before. We did a rehearsal before, yeah. and I started crying when he came out. <laughs> it wasn't even about me. I started crying, getting emotional when he proposed to me. And I was like, yes! <laughs> Guys, um, I really wish you a lifetime of happiness. Um, you guys are so awesome, and you're so incredible, and so amazing. And just, yeah, I hope life brings you so many great fortunes and I, and I and I hope that we can just be there at some point and we'll keep in touch on all those different things because it's been an amazing thing so thank you so much no thank you so yeah, much yeah thank, thank you so much like literally everybody you've um, honestly you've made our dreams come true and like, <laughs> I know it sounds really cliche like but honestly like this is everything I ever like dreamt of oh my god you're <laughs> gonna make me cry <laughs> so just and I feel like words just can't actually thank you all enough because 
everything, like everything I possibly could have wanted has just come true. So thank you. Oh, Jack, you've got <laughs> producer Jack. <laughs> oh, no, producer Jack is going, I'm going as well. What the hell's going on? Oh, um, God, we love you. Thank you so much for letting us be part of the journey. Oh, um, thank you. You're going to be the most beautiful bride. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Shelley, we love you guys. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my God, guys! I'm emotional. Oh my You're God. I got emotional. Tell me your best man. <laughs> I just love love. I bloody love love. Uh, I, I, That's very, very cool that we were involved in that. I just want to get. I um, feel like me and you should need to renew our vows ASAP. We've been married for less than six months. I know. No, more than six months. How? May. <laughs> May, June, July, August. Honey, April. Oh, yeah, April. No, we're not. What was our wedding date in April? 19th of April. Correct. What was our... Oh, was it? I don't think it was. Oh, no. It was the 14th of April. What was our wedding date in... That I know morning? exactly what it is. 20th of May. Well done. Bitch. You, you've you nailed it. It wasn't the 20th. It was the 21st. It wasn't. That was the pool party. It was the 20th of May. It was the 20th yeah, of May. Yeah, exactly. And 19th yeah. was the... the, the the Friday night. Okay. Anyway, look, we, we can we can josh around this. I all I just know is that we need to do it again because it's the greatest thing ever. It's the greatest thing ever. Maybe in ten years. Okay, um, guys, thank you so much for listening once again we to the love podcast. You guys. We love you so much. Remember, please send in your stories. We love to hear from you. Um, at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram or Newlyweds at JamPopProductions.co.uk. And also, if you can propose the pod, that would be amazing. Go do it propose the pod means go out tell find those incredible stories where you're telling people it could be a postman it could be a baker it could be a brother sister anyone that you do it in a fun a baker. Um, i don't know a candlestick maker i was going down that road okay Give okay. it to your baker and your candlestick maker. Okay, there we go. Exactly. So please propose the pod and then send it in how you propose the pod. We'd we love, love to you hear guys. From you. All right. If you're getting engaged, you always just cut me off. Because you ramble so much. It's but they like it. They don't. Who said? They do. I know they do. I don't think they do. If you're getting engaged, they're trying to jump on the tube at this point. No, they're not. Yeah, they're like trying to they're get out listening. of the car and they're waiting for you to say goodbye. Right. If you're getting engaged, good luck. If you're getting married, oh, you go for it, sissy pants. If you're n- I nearly went if you're naked. <laughs> if you're naked. Go for it as well. <laughs> if you want to get married. Oh, I just go and get if that you're ring. Divorced. Oh, don't worry about it. And if you're looking for love. Oh, it's out there. It's right around the we corner. We love you. Goodbye. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.